I think the first thing you need is knowledge. The second thing you need is some deal flow. Third thing is experience. And then the fourth thing is the capital. Okay, right? so and listen, listen, because I teach people how to do this and that's how I make my living, I got to ask you the million dollar question. Who was giving you your education? Uh, the guy that has a YouTube channel from the Northeast, the one in the Midwest, there was a guy in California. Everybody but me. Everybody but me, Jerome. I didn't even talk to the guy. I didn't even listen to the guys in Florida. I am just going down the list of podcasts 40 hours a week, trying to get it crammed in. Good for you. Yeah, I was trying know. to figure it out. It was but stupid. Let me, let me tell you something. The thing I love about your story so far is you did it. How many times do I, I mean, I tell, another one of my mantras is you got to make offers. Otherwise, this is nothing more than a very expensive hobby. You were making offers. You were going out there making it happen. Other people can sit back and watch those videos all day long and they never even put pen to paper to make an offer. So that good for you, man. That That's the best part of the whole story. That is the best well, part. But it was the silliest part of the story, right? To your point, like if a person isn't going to get somebody who has an end to end system to give them the foundational knowledge, yeah. they're stunning their growth. Yeah. Right. Doing it the way I did it was the most inefficient and ineffective way to do it. As much as people say, oh, well, you know, it's all free. It's not organized. And yeah. because it's not organized, it's inefficient. Uh, and yeah, you have yeah. knowledge gaps, which will make you ineffective. Yeah. Good point. That's a very good point. So. Uh, all right. So so bring me bring me to the closing table. How, how did we get to the closing table? OK, so I'm stubborn, right? We got to the second bank. I, I went to another eight. They all told me no, right? You don't have the requisite experience to do this deal. Okay, great. So Did you get my big plan, th that's what they told me to do, but yep. I didn't know anybody, right? Because yep. I didn't go to an education platform. I didn't even know that there were conferences to go to because the podcast that I was listening to never talked about the events. Interesting. So here we go. I... My grand plan for exiting corporate America was to go buy an apartment building. I couldn't buy an apartment building because I didn't have the requisite experience. So what does everybody do? You go fix and flip, right? So I start fixing and flipping houses. And I'm sitting on the stoop of my 1920s build, 2,000 square foot, $90,000 rehab budget project. And the guy pulls up in his white Dodge Ram and he says, hey, man, let me check out these finishes. We're getting ready to do a project down the street. And, you know, I'm proud because now I've done something, right? Yeah. I got somebody who wants to see my property. Those banks didn't know what they were talking about. Here I am out here doing the real estate thing. And so he comes up and we go in. He's like, oh, you took the wall out in the island? You put the sink in the island with the gooseneck faucet? Man, that's amazing. We go upstairs, he looks at the bathroom. He's like, man, this, this looks really good. I like this towel. And he's coming back downstairs. He's getting ready to walk out the door. He stops in the threshold and he says, hey, do you know anything about that 23 unit building behind the Chimbo Mart? I said, yeah. I tried to buy that four or five months ago. He said, well, I'm gonna make an offer on that later today. I said, wait, wait, you're gonna make an offer on it? You're the person I've been looking for. Right, because there's no way you're gonna make an offer on that if you don't have experience. He's like, yeah, we own a little something. I was like, look, man, don't leave me out of the deal. Please don't leave me out of the deal. Like I, I've been looking for you and I, I just didn't know who you were or where you were. He said, what are you gonna bring to the table? I said, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Just don't leave me out, man. Like I, I tried to buy this four or five months ago and they told me I needed an experience partner. And he says, again, what are you gonna bring to the table? I said, listen, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's just do this deal. And so he gets frustrated. He shakes his head. He walks out and downstairs through the grass, hops in his truck. And I'm sitting there like it finally happened, right? I'm getting ready to get in the deal with this person. I didn't even really know his name. I didn't have his phone number. But I knew for a fact on that Wednesday when I left there, that by Friday, he was going to call me and tell me we were under contract on the property. He did not call me by Friday, Charles. He oh, didn't call no. me by Monday. He didn't call me by Tuesday. And so then I get a phone call the following Tuesday from a person I used to do hard money lending with. 
And he says, hey, I got an opportunity to be a contractor on a project. It's like, oh, man, that's awesome. He's like, I, I don't really want to do those things anymore. But you remember when we talked about that deal you wanted to do in Churchill? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they asked me to come interview the GC on that. And I told them I wouldn't do the deal unless you were involved. <sighs> I said, yes. Yeah. Right. And so we go through it. Um, we, we go through due diligence and in the end, I end up being an asset manager on the deal. And I still remember after we close, there was a line in the article that says, rising star partners with proven investors to revitalize Churchill Town. That's so cool. And the bank started calling. They wanted to know what else I had in pipeline. They wanted to know oh, if we decided who we were going to refinance with. They wanted to know if we could have lunch so they could show me their product. And I, I didn't even know what a pipeline was, Charles. Right? Yeah. One deal, right? I, I wasn't looking for the other one because I was trying to figure out this one. And so that's how we got to the closing table. And not only was it, you know, the GC partner and the guy that I met at my house and me, but the broker rolled his commission in and we brought a property manager in that had, you know, three or 4,000 doors at the time. And, you know, the band of the five of us did it via joint venture. You know, and, let me tell you. The thing I love about the story is you are living the Teddy Roosevelt uh, story of being the man in the arena. The reason why all of these things happen to you is because you took action and you were actually in the game. That guy would, if you were just sitting above your mother's apartment reading about multifamily, none of this would have happened. You took action. You, you know, everything you did only happened because of some other action that you had taken. That is key. It's absolutely paramount to success in this business. You have to move. You have you know, to move. My mom told me this really cool story. We were, it had to be like eight. We were riding in the car and there was a person sitting in the turning lane with their hazard lights on. And it was like their, their car was stuck. And it was like, wow, that was weird, right? And so she's like, yeah, sometimes cars break, baby. Don't worry about it. And so we keep going and we get a few stoplights away and there's another car that's broken down. But instead of the person sitting in a the car, they're out and they started pushing it. And then you saw the craziest thing, Charles. There oh. were other people who pulled into the gas station oh, and man. they got out and they started helping them push the car. And I was like, mom, why, why are they stopping to help him push the car and the other person they just left in the turning lane? She said, well, maybe if, if you're trying to accomplish something and people see you making progress, then oh wow, I love that story. I'm not, you know what, Jerome? I'm going to steal that story and say it was my mother in the car that said that. That's how good that I, story is. I love it, man. That's I a love cool it. story. But you got to put your own car. You got to. That is really a cool story. That you know, when people see you taking action, they yeah. want to get behind you. One thousand percent. Yeah, that's a cool story, Jerome.